now we are, we are still looking at clay in the potter's hand and before you is clay, clay which was transformed. Buana Sifiwe. One of the worst clays. The last time we talked about different clays picked from different, different rivers, different. I think I was from the worst of the worst rivers. But Mungu tu alinipenda, akanitengeneza. Hallelujah. I'm here today standing, the clay, the vessel, honorable vessel for the use of God. Amen. So we are going to look at treasure in jars of clay. And when we are talking about jars of clay, that is who we are. Literally, that is who we are. Before God found us, before that clay was picked from wherever it was, imagine we looked like a nothing. We were a nobody. In fact, we were aliens. And God had mercy on us and picked us from there and took us through a process. And I want to imagine the process God took us through was such a seamless process that nothing was carried which was not for the kingdom. Amen? Amen. If anything was carried which does not reflect who God is and what the kingdom of God is, that one did, didn't reach the end of the production line. Alibaki Huko shattered and taken back to the potter's house. I stand here, a product which went to the end, acceptable before the Lord. I hope that is your testimony this afternoon that you've been taken from the pit, from the clay. You've been, yani ume, you, you've been put through the fire. Some, some paint has been put on you. Not paint to disguise. You know, sometimes paint is put to disguise the defects in a product. You are looking at a clean product. Hallelujah which went through the product line and to the end, ready to be used by the master. Hallelujah. If that is not you, if that is not what is in you, I'm inviting you to this altar because we need to start the process. Hallelujah. You know, when you're in a project, you're doing a project, and it comes out the way you didn't anticipate, or the vision that you had, what the project manager will do is to break it down. And Bishop, you've done it many times. When you're building, I've heard you saying, bring it down. How did it go like this? Bring it down. We want today to take some people to the drawing board and take them to the cross. That the end product is a product which when God looks at it, say, yes, it is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm one of those products. And I'm not ashamed to say I'm a clean product. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You're not seeing a clean product. Amen. Clean inside out. Amen. For the glory of God. So let's read from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 to 12. I don't know where I'll start from, but I'll start somehow. Therefore, since through God's mercy, we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. And I want you to mark that. We've renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. Hallelujah. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displayed the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord 
and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, may this light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this, and mark that, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Hallelujah. We cannot boast of anything. Amen? It is all-surpassing power which is from God and not us. It means our salvation is not from us. It is not our power. It took somebody's blood to make us who we are. And so we have no self-righteousness. Then it says, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Hallelujah! Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Amen? We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we, for we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. Hallelujah! Amen. When you look at this, this, this was written by Paul, and, and like Paul, the Apostle Paul is a great example of a man who never lost his sense of the mercy and grace of God that he received. We know the life of Paul. We know what he did before he encountered the grace of God. We know where he came from. In fact, he was in the forefront of persecuting the Christians. And when we look at this life, you wonder, what a turnaround in the life of this man, from a persecutor to a man who was defending the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. You know, when God turns around a sinner, you cannot afford to be lukewarm. My brothers, my sisters, when he does it, it is a clean job that you will turn around 360 degrees and you will be defending the very gospel you are against. You become the greatest advocate. Amen. 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 Like all of us, Paul was born in sin. But unlike most of us, his deviance against God became public. It was so it was seen. It was not a secret. When he went out persecuting the church of Jesus Christ and killing Christians, it was not a secret. I know you want to tell me this afternoon that you know my sin is so small. Eh? I'm not in the limelight of, you know, doing things against God. I'm not a persecutor. Yes, you may not be a persecutor, but what is the word of God telling us? telling us that that sin which he's hiding in you, nobody else knows it is only between you and God. When God takes it away from you, my sisters, my brothers, you cannot keep quiet. Hallelujah. You will come out and say, this is what I was, and now this is where I am. This is where I'm standing with God. I persecuted the church. I did this and this, but this is what God has done for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I gave an example in the, sec the second service. And I said, when you look at me, cinema <laughs> Safi. Hey. Mali Safi. Hi, Kwaivi. It wasn't like this. It took some molding. It took some washing. It took some, I mean, it took everything that God, God employed all the equipment and tools to clean this woman. 
And the same God can apply the same. In fact, it costed the blood of Jesus. That when you stand, you are not ashamed. You'll be saying, this is where I was. I've walked a journey with the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what we have. We are presenting a clean product to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I want to say this. I don't know where you stand today. And we looked at the production line. The production of God is like this. From the clay, to being cleaned, to being molded to the shape God wanted, to being put in the fire, removed from the fire, then it is, it is painted, then it is put on the shelf for the devil to see the clean product. Hallelujah. When the devil looks at you, does he see a clean product? We are advocating for clean products in the kingdom of God. And I said, I carry marks. In my body, I carry marks. Some you can see, some you cannot see. Those you cannot see, come and see me in private. I carry marks from the kingdom of Satan. Some marks are visible, some are not visible. I don't know what you are carrying. Amen? But when the master comes around, when he shows up, hallelujah, he shows up with a clean product like what you are seeing today. Amen. As I deliver the word of God, I want you to imagine where you are. You could be at the clay. You could be at the, at the, at the vessel which is still wet. You could be at, at the stage where you, you have to be shattered and taken back. You could be at the stage where you are ready for God to use you. The choice is yours. And today the master is calling us to come to himself. That he wants to clean us. He wants to clean us and show her to the world that look at what I've done. This is the product and it is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. While we can look at Paul and echo the amazement of what God did in his life, we must remember that our stories are different. The story of Paul was totally different. A man who persecuted the church and did all he could to bring down the gospel of Jesus Christ. But the day he turned around, the story was different. I don't know what your story is this afternoon, but God is speaking to us, and I want to run through it very fast. We are looking at the, we are looking at the treasures in jars of clay. People. God will not come and reside in a vessel which has not been sanctified. Amen. Amen. He's looking for a people who have been sanctified, who have obeyed this gospel, and he wants to come in and reside in us. And in verse 7 it says, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. From the scripture we've just read, three things come out very clearly. And I want to read that. It says, um, it says, um, sorry for that. It talks about a treasure. What is a treasure? A treasure is something of great value. Let me tell you, when God visits your life, when he visits your life, your life will never be the same again. Hallelujah. It, is, it becomes valuable. And many times when we think about treasure, 
We think of financial riches, we think about gold, we think about jewels. But that is not what Paul is talking to us about in the, in the word of God. The treasure he speaks of is the treasure of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That this treasure who is coming to reside in this jar of clay is a treasure which cannot be compared to anything. Now, if you talk about a treasure, you cannot take gold and put it on the ground there for everybody to pass by and see. What happens when we have something we treasure very much? We take it to a nice place and keep it there. Now, what I want to say this afternoon is, is that treasure, the knowledge of God, the power of God residing in us, has he found a place to stay in us? Or the treasure is in a, a place where he is not comfortable? Hallelujah. What will make God not be comfortable in our lives? First, it is sin. Two, is prayerlessness. Three, is not reading the word of God. And the most thing affecting most Christians is compromise. Does the Holy Spirit have a place to stay in us? Or he comes and he doesn't find a clean house for him to reside there, to abide there. What am I trying to say? That this treasure cannot be placed anywhere. Buana sifiwe. It cannot abide where there is sin. Number two, we look at the jars of clay. In the word of God. Paul is talking about his own body and life when he talks about the ethan materials. And we know that before God found us, we were like these ethan materials, materials of no value. But when God wants to come and reside in us, our minds and our bodies are translated. Hallelujah. I want to ask you, have you been translated to a material which God would want to use? My people, God will not use anybody. Which means then our lives must reflect of what God would want to use. He will not use anybody he finds on the way. Yes, we are formed of, 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 of earthly material. But what are we saying? Is the material which has passed through the process fit for the master's use? If not, I want us to rethink again our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And as, I was telling you in the first service, this material was very dirty, very dirty. That I'm sure Jesus would look at me and, and wonder what will come out of this material. But because I've gone through a process, today I can stand and say, God, I'm here. What is your take this afternoon? Are you available? That your material has been transformed that the world will see, yes, this is a material fit for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Paul says that we are like common household vessels in which God has placed his incredible treasure, the gospel. We say it, that in every home, and we preach this throughout this man. In every home, there are different vessels being used. Some are cups, some are pots, some, some we even have toilets which are made of clay. And when you look at these materials, would God want to use, come and use common, common materials in a house, common vessels? That is not what we can give. He is the king of kings and the lord of lords. He will want to use the best of the materials that he ever created. Praise God. 
I don't know what you feel this afternoon. Are you the material for the common use? Or you are the material which will be used by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the top notch? But very one thing, very sad thing, is that we appear before the master as we are. Yes, he says, come to me. Come to me as you are. But after we've come to the master, have we undergone the transformation? Praise God. Do we still remain that clay which was picked from wherever it was? Do we continue remaining like that? And we can say no, that we cannot remain the way we were created. We must be transformed. We must be transformed so that this God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, will come and reside in us. Buana Sifiwe. Praise God. We must be transformed. The third word is surpassing power. What does it mean to surpassing power? It is to become better, hello, to become greater or stronger than what it was. Paul tells us that this fragile, weak jar of clay actually works in power, in courage, and in strength because they have been transformed by the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the Lord is calling some people to be transformed this afternoon, to be refined, to be that which God wants, us, wants them to be. And I want to talk three things, Bishop. Give me five minutes. Three things just of clay signify. This is what it signifies. One, just of clay are common place. And we've talked about those things which are in common place, the everyday use. But we are saying the Lord is calling us for transformation this afternoon. Hallelujah. And you know, common things are made of very basic materials. Eh? Basic materials. It could be made of straw, made of wood, made of soil, and made of everything. Those are the common materials. But God is looking for a people who will be transformed from, from the common material like the clay and be transformed that the King of kings and the Lord of lords can live in it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Number two, jars of clay are fragile. And they also signify weakness and fragility. Since their material was inexpensive, they break easily, just as we see with clay, uh, jars of clay. We don't have to be materials which are so fragile that anything passing by picks us and goes with it. Hallelujah. When, we, when you are a fragile Christian, it means anything will knock you down. God is calling us out of our weaknesses and out of our fragility to be pillars in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And number three, jars of clay I made, jars of clay I made by hand. It is never the clay who decides what they want to be. Never. That clay, it is the potter who decides what they should be. And therefore, I want us to come to God in humility so that he molds us and makes us what he wants us to be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That is, if we are looking at becoming noble vessels in the house of God. Praise God. Amen. And these jars of clay, if you look at them, they are low by the standards of the world. If you compare these vessels which are fragile, they are low by standards of the world. And we may be looked at that like made out of bad material. 
But let me tell you, this material was purchased by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we are calling the Lord this afternoon to speak to us and make us treasures. Make us clay which treasures where God can reside, where God can use us for nobility. Buana Sifiwe. Praise God. I'm calling somebody this afternoon. If your life, if you feel your life, it is, it is, it is in one of the stages where you think your life has not been transformed. Maybe you've walked this journey of, of this production line, but you got stuck somewhere and you think you cannot go to the destiny where God wanted you to go. I'm calling you this afternoon that we are being called to a higher ground. Hallelujah. Where God will use us for noble uses, not, not things which are, which, which are useless, where people will look at us and not see Jesus. Hallelujah. And so we are calling, I'm calling on you, that come to this Jesus, come to the Savior, is the transformer, is the molder who will turn around our lives. After all we have gone through, the Lord wants to bring us back to himself, to mold us and make us and use us as clay, just of clay, which can be used for things which are of treasure. Hallelujah. Thank you. Worship them come. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to reflect your life and ask the Lord, what is this you want me to be? I don't know where you are this afternoon. You could still be the clay. Maybe you need Jesus. Maybe you need Jesus to touch your lives. I'm telling you this afternoon, come to the Lord. Maybe at some point you got saved. You got saved and you got stuck at some place and you were shattered because you could not go through the production line. You could not proceed from where you are. I'm still calling you to recommit your life to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We may stand in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We exalt you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We worship you. We exalt you, Jesus. There's none like you, Lord.